I came across an acquaintance of mine the other day. It was a woman I had met a few weeks earlier. We started talking about dogs and she was telling me about her dog and I was talking about my dogs and I was on my way to the mall and I showed up and I was as I was approaching the mall I saw that she was standing outside the main entrance of the mall with her dog in a sit and she was feeding her dog all of these treats saying good girl, good girl, good girl. And, uh, and I was like, well, that's interesting. So I side, a side saddled up to her because I could see that her dog was uncomfortable. Her, the dog was very nervous about the, you know, the situation she was in readily still taking the treats, but still <laughs> uncomfortable. And so I made sure I didn't look at the dog or talk to the dog. And I just said, Hey, how are things going? And she said, no, not bad. I'm just really trying to work on my dog being, um, a little bit more calm, around people so I thought I would come to the mall and I was like oh okay great how's it going and she said well not too bad but she can st- you know she's still a little bit uncomfortable and I'm running out of treats and I said you know half jokingly I said you know what might be a better idea what if instead of feeding the dog the treats what if you just stood here with a big old box of cookies like some Oreos or something and actually just handed them out to the people that ignored your dog and just said good human (laughs) good good human just gave out cookies and she laughed she said it probably would be cheaper and I'm like oh right and she said yeah I can't believe the number of people that even after I asked them not to pay attention to my dog are still trying to pet my dog anyway that I thought was an interesting concept. Let's reward the people for not talking to the dogs instead of the dogs. But that gets me into today's topic of treats. And here we are. I said I would do it. Here we are. The conversation about treats. To treat or not to treat. That is the question. Many people think that I am against treats and that is not true. Treats 100% have their place. They can be an incredible useful tool, especially when we are training our dogs or helping them learn English as a second language. They can definitely be a relationship booster, but more often than not, many people use treats as a crutch to their relationship. And that's what I want to talk about today. So today we're talking all things treats, how to use treats effectively, how and when not to use treats, and how to get the most out of that treat pouch. Let's go. Welcome to Beyond Obedience, the podcast where we redefine dog companionship. Hi, I'm Tracy Franken, your guide to build a beautiful bond that transcends traditional training. Flip the script. This is where your dog is the true expert. For dog lovers who crave more than just a pocket full of treats, this is not your typical dog training podcast. This is Beyond Obedience. Hello, my dog-loving friend. It is Tracy here from Beyond Obedience. This is Beyond Obedience, the podcast, episode number nine. And today, we are getting into it. Today, I want to give you some practical tips and tricks on how to utilize your treat pouch in a way that builds engagement and helps the dog to believe that you are, in fact, the reward, not the juicy chicken wiener. So (laughs) you don't want to be less than a chicken wiener. Am I right? (laughs) Am I right? Nobody wants to be less than a chicken wiener in your dog's life. So this is an incredible topic and I'm, I'm so glad to get into it. But before I do, I have a very exciting announcement. Uh, This is episode number nine. I probably should have done it for episode number 10. That seems like it would have been a better number to do this on, but I couldn't wait. So just for my podcast listeners, I have I have put a coupon code on one of my online programs, Chaos to Calm. Chaos to Calm is my mini online program all about creating a calm household for your dog. It includes some talk about rituals and triggers in dogs, as well as a how-to instructional videos on how to teach your dog the place command. And for my amazing podcast listeners, I am giving you the opportunity to grab Chaos to Calm absolutely free free, you're going to simply go to beyondobedience.ca forward slash calm. At that checkout page, you're going to hit buy now. And on the checkout page, just put in under the coupon code, the word podcast, and that should give you 100% 
off the price of chaos to come. And that's just a little thank you for me to you, especially for those who have shared the podcast, who have given us a five star rating, who have given me a review. If you haven't had a chance to do that, please do. It does help push the podcast out to more and more people. And I really do appreciate all the help I can get as a new fledgling little podcast. All right. So enough of that. Let's talk about treats. To treat or not to treat. That is the question. And I want to talk about this idea of there is uh, good ways to use treats and not as effective way to use treats that will either enhance your relationship or become a crutch in your relationship. So first and foremost, treats are great to teach your dog behavior right? Especially puppies. They're a great way. F- they're a great motivator. They're a great way to teach your dog English as a second language, teaching them that obedience, all of that good stuff. They're also great rewards for recall and all of that good things. But where it becomes a problem is when we start to see that treats become, instead of a reward, a bribe, Right. So, and you'll be the, you'll, you'll be able to know when you're doing this, right? Those moments where you, if you have it in your heart, like, please just come and I will give you this treat. Like, please, if you just do this, I will give you the treat. If you have that air of desperation (laughs) and you're trying to bribe your dog out of a behavior, uh, that's where treats can become a little bit problematic. Remember, we want to use treats as a reward. Now, as a caveat to that, when I am dealing with a dog that is resource guarding, I will 100% use food as bribery, especially if I'm trying to get something that I know is dangerous away from my dog. Um, in those situations, 100%, I'm bribing that dog. I'm like, you give me that thing, I'll give you this thing. <laughs> that's bribery and sometimes it's warranted but I think sometimes we end up bribing our dogs we're bribing them for good behavior when instead what we need to be doing is asking them for good behavior and when they do rewarding it it sounds like it's the same thing but you'll feel it you know what I'm saying you'll feel the difference and the feeling comes from if you are like oh at your wits end you're just like listen I just I don't care just just take the treat and stop doing what you're doing We're not really utilizing treats in a way that is effectively increasing our bond with our dog. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All right. So that's one way to not use treats, right? We want to make sure that there's a reward for good behavior, not a bribe to get the behavior that you want. All right. The other thing that I always want to remind people is this idea of intermittent treats, Okay, we want to get to a point in our relationship where we're not always giving treats for every little thing that you do. I remember I used to laugh, um, <laughs> and, I, and I'm going to say this, and maybe some of you do this as well. Um, I used to laugh because whenever I would take my do- my dad's dogs, um, when my di- my when my parents would go away and the, they would bring their dogs to to board with me when I had the boarding kennel, and my dad would always come with the dog food and whatnot, and he would hand me this treat bag or like a big bucket of of dog treats and he would like now remember the boys he always called them the boys the boys get their cookies after dinner and I and I was like say what now and he said yeah the boys always get their cookie after dinner and I kind of laughed at him I'm like what are we rewarding them for eating their dinner and he was like no dummy it's dessert and I (laughs) And I was like, okay, if we're treating it like dessert, fine. But I don't know if I necessarily want to or need to reward the dog for eating dinner. Um, and sometimes we see the same thing, right? We we will sometimes get into this idea of rewarding the dog for going outside. Well, guess what? Outside is a reward. <laughs> that That is 100% a reward to a dog. In most cases, and for some dogs, it's better than a cookie. So, you know, I'll hear lots of people be like, well, I, you know, I rewarded the dog for going outside. Um, You might have rewarded the dog. You might think you're rewarding the dog for going outside, but more likely than not, you should be rewarding the dog for coming back in. Right. So uh, we want to make sure (laughs) I digress a little bit. Sorry. That just made me think about my dad and uh, and it made me laugh. Um, I got my, I, I will tell you, I have my love of my dogs came from my dad and I miss my dad every single day. 
Um, but yeah, that used to make me laugh, especially when he was like, no dummy, it's dessert. And I was, <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, fair enough. Um, but we want to, uh, getting back to this idea of intermittent rewards, uh, not just intermittent rewards, but we want to categorize our rewards, right? We want to categorize our, our, our rewards in like things that your dog has done. That's amazing versus things that are just mm, so, so right. Uh, we we can have treats and, and, and different values of treats based on the actual job that they did. And we want to make sure that we're doing it intermittently. It's not every single time. And it's not high value rewards for low value events, right? I don't want, as I mentioned with my, you know, with my dad, I don't want to give my dog a high value reward for eating his dinner. That's that's just, uh, your dog would probably eat the dinner regardless, right? <laughs> so we want to sort of be really intentional with our treats and our rewards. What are we actually rewarding? Is it reward worthy? And what is the value of this reward that I'm giving? Because um, if we start giving high value rewards for low value um, behaviors, when we need to really reward the dog, what do we have left? right? Like, what do we have left? If we're using our best treats and our best rewards for, you know, mediocre things, then when our dogs do amazing things, we're not going to be able to up that value. And that, that takes away some of the, um, the, the repetitive nature of the dog's behavior. So speaking, I know I keep saying this, and I'm probably not getting to the point very well, but the idea of intermittent rewards, you don't want to reward your dog for every little thing that they do, right? Eventually, once you've taught the dogs the behaviors, once they know what the behaviors are, you want to do what's called intermittent rewards. And the reason for that, believe it or not, behaviorally, is that you will actually create a stronger likelihood that your dog will repeat the behavior if you do the rewards intermittently. And I know that sometimes seems a little counterintuitive because you think, well, if the dog doesn't get a treat, are they going to stop doing the reward? Oh, contraire. Oh, contraire. And the best way to describe this phenomena is with us humans, right? One of the reasons why gambling is addictive is because of intermittent reward. The idea that sometimes you get a small reward, sometimes you might get a big jackpot, sometimes you don't win anything at all, is what keeps us going back and trying again. It actually increases our try. So if we were to just get the same reward over and over and over again, the fun of that wouldn't work, right? That, that, that we would actually, like, De- we would see a decrease in the behavior. So you want to make sure that you're not rewarding for every little thing every single time. All right. So that's kind of a little bit of the how to use treats in a way that works, right? Avoiding bribery. You're going to do it intermittently and you're going to place value on those things. So low value behavior gets low value reward, high value behavior, like your dog, if your dog, if you're out in a walk and your dog sees a squirrel and you go, oh my gosh, and you say, oh man, Fido, please come, come. And they turn and they come to you. I would be given the best of the best of rewards. I'd be digging in that tree pouch, finding the filet mignon. The filet mignon of war of rewards for that because that's a big ask, right? You're asking the dog to suspend their genetic desire to chase things. They chose you over the squirrel. Woo! Party and a big reward. But, you know, if your dog just ate their dinner and you think that they deserve dessert, um, you know, ba- your basic, like, you know, cookie is fine for that, you know, and sometimes not at all. Okay, so those are the ways that we can use treats in a way that works to help our our training and help, you know, increase behavior that we want. But let's talk about this idea. I mentioned it earlier about how sometimes I see that rewards can come can become a crutch in our relationship where we start to feel like we are nothing more than our treat pouch to our dogs. We start to feel it right. We can we can sense that many 
dog owners come up to me and say, I don't know if my dog would actually come back if I wasn't holding this treat. And when we get to that part of a relationship, we realize that um, we may have either been rewarding too much or or not um, not asking more of our dogs, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, one of my taglines one of the things that I really, really strive to be every single day is I want to be the reason and the reward in my dog's life. I want my dog to come back to me because I am awesome. And also you might get a reward, <laughs> right? I am awesome. And also you might get a treat. I am awesome. And also there might be something else in it for you. And maybe there won't be, but you won't care because it's all about me. It's very egotistical. I get that. But it's what we want to strive for when we're talking about relationship. So in these cases, when we're trying to play this part, rewards can actually be um, a catalyst to creating a relationship with your dog where you are the reason and the reward. And let me give you an example. And this is one of, I think, the, fa- the best ways that I like to use treats or um, food when it comes to creating a relationship where they think I'm awesome. And the, way, the best way that I can describe it is this. You have to be a part of the reward sequence. It has to actually be, it has to include you in the actual sequence. So what do I mean by that? So for example, when I go out with my dogs, and I will say this as a sidebar, talking about the value of treats and rewards and whatnot, I very rarely have treats. I've recently bought some treats. Shout out to my friends at Sure Gain Feeds and Needs who, <laughs> who helped me pick out treats. I recently bought treats for my my youngest Jack Russell Terrier because we are struggling with springtime recall and I need to up my ante a little bit that way. So I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm, I bought a couple of bacon flavored treats for that. But generally speaking, I don't actually use treats, but rather I use my dog's food. This is very helpful for people that are utilizing food and food rewards. And perhaps say, let's say your dogs are getting a little chunky, you know, you know, like, you know, when you go into the vets for that checkup and the vet's like, oh, your dog wants for nothing. You know, those little, <laughs> those little digs, some vets will just come right out and tell you your, your dog's fat, but some of them try to find like clever ways to let you know that your dog, <laughs> your dog might be a little bit on the chunky side. So if that's happening for you and you're wondering, am I feeding my dogs too many calories and how can I still utilize food as a reward you're going to use their food, their actual food. They're part of their breakfast. So what I do in many cases for my dogs, especially my dogs, they're down in the kennel, um, I will give them part of their breakfast. So I'll feed them their breakfast, and then when they're out in the yard doing their biz, I clean up their kennel and do all of that good stuff. And then when I take them out for our walk, I take a handful of that food or the other portion of their breakfast that I didn't give them. You see how I'm not increasing my calories? So I'll take a handful of that food, and I'll put it in my pocket, and we'll go out on our walk. And, of course, I have the nice forest trails, and I will let my dogs off leash. And when they're not paying attention... When they run off and they're sniffing some things, I'll take some of that food and I'll put it in like, 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 I'll put it on the ground and I'll maybe put some leaves and stuff on it. A little bit harder in the wintertime when there's snow, but I'll put some leaves and stuff on it. And then I'll just start digging around on the ground, just sort of digging around there. And inevitably my dogs are like, what's she doing? What's wrong with her? Right? Because, you know, a human digging around on the ground is going to be suspicious. So when my dogs come back, they'll come back and they'll be like, what are you doing there? And they'll start looking in there. And as soon as their nose hits it, they're like, what's that? And they'll sort of dig around in there and then they'll find the food. And then I'll be like, oh, we did it. We found the food. And we have this little celebration and the dog eats the food. And then they get really excited. And I'm like, let's go see if we can find some more. And then I'll take off. (laughs) like a crazy woman. So I'll take off and they'll like run after me and find me. And then usually like that, sometimes they'll like, they'll be onto it. They'll be like, Hey, 
wait a second, you kind of smell like you have some food. So then I'll just start randomly dropping some food and they'll be picking it up. Sometimes I'll wait for them to go off again. Anyway, you get my point. The point is, is that I'm taking their food and I'm burying it. I'm hiding it. I'm hunting it. We're hunting it together. We're finding it together. And then we're having a huge celebration. So not only did I create a game with their actual food, so not treats, nothing exciting, but the excitement came from me. I was a part of it. I was the person that found it first, right? Blow your dog's mind. You found their food. What? That's bananas. So now I've got a dog that when they do start to wander off, if I turn a corner or I start to look at something on the ground, you bet your booty my dog is coming back to check out what I found. Sometimes there's nothing there or some things there is. I mean, they smell lots of things. I don't smell everything. I don't smell hardly anything at all. But the point is this. I have a dog now that's really super engaged because sometimes, remember that intermittent reward, sometimes we're going to find stuff together. Sometimes we won't. Um, a couple of times for my dogs that like to sort of jump up on things, I'll hide some of that food on tree stumps. I will, um, once I put it in a tree, I have a picture of Paris in a tree um, because she, like, I, I honestly didn't think that dog had a nose for that because she's a noof, but she did. She found it, <laughs> climbed a tree. It was amazing. We had such a celebration. I took pictures. It was a hoot, right? So now you can see how... We can still utilize the concept of rewards. We can still utilize the concept of treats. We can have some real fun with it, but it's an event that includes me in it. It's not that the dog did something and then came back and I went, good dog, and gave them a cookie. It was, in fact, I was a part of that. And again, for those of you that might have dogs that are watching their weight, you don't have to buy fancy treats above and beyond this. You just have to take their food, give them some of their breakfast, take some of their breakfast on a walk, right? Now, if you've got really good sniffy dogs, what I do recommend is if you're taking some of their food on a walk, try to put it in, in like an airtight container so that they can't really smell it, wash your hands. Like you got to be kind of clever, right? Because very soon your dogs will realize that you have their food in your pocket and you won't even get out the door. They'll be like, give me my food. <laughs> No, you have it. Depends on your dog. Anyway, that is probably one of the greatest tips that I can give you when it comes to being the reason and the reward in your dog's life. Don't just give your dog a treat for the sake of giving your dog a treat. Right? Sure, your dog might be paying attention to you, looking at you, sitting, doing all of the obedience things. But at the end of the day, you're just the person standing there holding a treat pouch. You can actually take those things and build engagement and excitement in your dog's life. Have them think that you are awesome. You're finding food. You're hiding food. You're putting food in trees. You're getting up on things with them. You do that. And all of a sudden, you are way more than a treat pouch, my friend. You are the reason and the reward in your dog's life. All right, so there you go. There's some info on treats for you. I hope that helps. Let me know. Um, reach out to me if you have any questions or comments or your stories about how you utilize treats. Let me know. As always, get out there today and be the person that your dog thinks you are because your dog thinks you are amazing and so do I. Have a great week everybody and I will talk to you all next week. Cheers.